John chapter 10, we're going to read today the first five verses. If you have a red letter Bible, then you recognize that the first five verses of John chapter 10 are all in red, meaning this is all words spoken specifically by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what we're about to read is all words that were spoken by the Lord Himself. Amen. All right. John chapter 10, verses 1 through 5. And the King James text today reads as follows. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. Amen. I want to talk to us for a while today on the topic, I know that voice. Amen. I know that voice. If you'll bow your heads with me one more moment today. Master, once again, God, we come humbly before the throne of grace. Desiring, O oh God, today your presence, your power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost as the word of God would go forth. Men, women are feeble and frail. It is impossible for us to deliver the Word of God today in such a manner as to allow it to be received by those that hear it except for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. My desire, O oh God, today is to deliver the Word that you have placed in my spirit for the church of the living God at this hour. I pray, Lord, as the Word of God goes forth, that I would be true and faithful to the leading of the Holy Ghost, so that the hearer will be able to say at this message's end, I have heard today from the Lord. I have heard the voice of the Lord. Master, in the name of Jesus, anoint your messenger. Touch, anoint today the ear the hearing of every hearer. No one, God, who is listening at this hour, whether it be live, whether it be by reason of recording, nobody that is listening at this moment is listening by accident. But they are here by divine design that you might speak directly to them. You speak through your messenger, but it is you, O oh God, we desire to hear from. Grant it this hour, Master, for we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. One of the most wonderful aspects of the anointing of the Holy Ghost is the voice recognition factor. The anointing allows the voice of the Lord to be heard and not merely his words. Did you hear what I said today? The anointing allows the voice of the Lord to be heard, and not merely his words. You see, there are a lot of people who preach from the Bible. They preach from the Word of God, but that doesn't mean they're preaching the Word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that when they're preaching, God's people are hearing from 
the Lord Himself. And this is the mistake a lot of people who are outside of the church, a lot of people who are unbelievers today, people in the world, they think that everything that calls itself is a Christian is a Christian. And everything that identifies as preaching from the Word of God is preaching, quote, the Word of God. I have often seen people say, well, you know, the Bible says thus and so. And these aren't people who believe this, mind you. I'm talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about people in the world. And they'll say, well, the Bible says thus and so. And I think to myself, where do you get that from? See, somewhere along the line, somebody convinced you that what they were saying represented what God was saying in His Word. But when you hear the preached anointed Word of God, the wonderful thing about the anointing is you hear the voice of the Lord, not merely the words of the Lord. Do you follow what I'm telling you now? Anybody can quote the words of the Lord. Anybody can twist them and turn them to make them say whatever they good and well want to make it say. That's right. But it takes the prophetic anointing of the Holy Ghost to allow the believer to leave the service able to say as I prayed today, I heard today from the Lord. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord's voice in my pastor's preaching. I heard the Lord's voice in the evangelist's preaching. I heard the voice of the Lord. I heard my pastor speaking, but out of his mouth I heard the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. And in our primary text today, the Lord Jesus Christ made clear His sheep Know His voice. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, when I hear somebody preaching something that doesn't sound right and hits my spirit wrong, it is because not the content of what they're saying, but I'm not hearing the voice of the Lord. The anointing is not in it. The anointing is not present. And without the anointing, there's no voice recognition. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? All of a sudden, I, I've gone to churches and I've watched preachers on television and I'm sitting there and they're preaching and I'm not dissecting their message. I am not breaking up their message and trying to determine quote unquote, if it's the Word of God or not. You know, if it's accurate or not. No, I don't have to do that because immediately I'm not feeling the Holy Ghost. I'm not feeling the presence of God in their preaching and in their speaking. And therefore, I am not hearing the Lord's voice. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Oh, I'm going to tell you, most believers today or most people who identify as believers today, uh, folks, I got news for you. They're as lost as the greatest of sinners. They are bound for a devil's hell on grease skids and yet they go to church every Sunday and they listen to preaching every Sunday but they are not his sheep. How do I know? Because they wouldn't recognize the voice of the Lord if it came out and knocked him in the head. <coughs> I'll tell you, in the word of God, the Lord has spoken through donkeys. Am I telling the truth? The mm -hmm. voice of the Lord mm -hmm. has spoken through donkeys. And if you're smart, if you're in tune, if you're really a child of God, then you'll recognize the voice of the Lord regardless of where it's coming from. Oh my. See, a lot of people want to pick this preacher apart. Well, you can't be a true preacher of the gospel. You can't be who you are and truly, genuinely represent God and represent His Word. Well, I'll tell you what. When you get to heaven, you just ask the Lord whether or not His voice was being transmitted through my mouth. If you discount what I say,
because you want to sit in judgment of me and you want to criticize me and you want to condemn me, you just go right ahead and do that. But I got news for you. His sheep know his voice. And there's a lot of people who've heard this old preacher preach and they said, boy, howdy, I'll tell you what, Pastor, I know I heard from the Lord. Hello now. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? I recognized His voice. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord's, the Lord's voice as you were preaching the Word of God. I want to tell you, you better be careful about making judgments about people so you can discount what they say because, honey, what they say may be the exact thing you need to hear. Mm-hmm. You may disagree with their message, and yet their message may be true and faithful. Hello now. It may be exactly what God is trying to communicate to you. And you are foolish. If you sit in judgment of the speaker, you are foolish if you try to dis dissect and, and uh, dice up what is being said based on your interpretation of God's Word. Because, honey, if you are not able to hear the voice of the Lord, listen to me, you will never be able to be corrected when your understanding is wrong. Oh, my goodness. You remember the experience Peter had on the housetop as he was praying? Before going to the house of Cornelius, do you remember the sheep, the vision he had of the sheep that came down and all the unclean beasts and animals and birds that were on that sheep? And he said, I heard a voice say, Arise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter could never have come to an understanding. Oh, listen to me now. Of God's inclusiveness. Had it not been for His ability, listen to me children, to hear the voice of the Lord. See, that whole experience didn't transpire without God Himself speaking, did it? No, the Lord spoke and Peter heard Him. And Peter recognized, that's my shepherd talking, hallelujah. That's Jesus speaking, because my sheep know my voice. I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of stuff this old preacher preaches, and I know in my spirit, just as sure as I'm alive, just as sure as, as I'm breathing this afternoon, I know, I know that I know that what I'm preaching is a word from God. It is a prophetic word for the church. Tommy has said, to me on many occasions. Man, I'll tell you, the whole church world, all of the Christian world needs to hear that message that you just preached. Yes, they do, but the problem is many out there who identify as Christians are not really his sheep. And for that reason, they wouldn't hear the voice of the Lord in it. Do you know what I'm telling you now? They wouldn't hear the voice of the Lord in it. No, no, no. No. Anything that contradicts their prejudices, anything that contradicts their preconceptions, anything that contradicts their worldly, carnal, fleshly interpretations of various passages from the Word of God, anything that contradicts that, they immediately discount as not being the Lord. Oh, I'm going to tell you, I've been to many a meeting in my day. I've been to many a church service, many a conference, many a camp meeting. <coughs> and the preacher's gotten up and he's preached things, I'm going to tell you, that were hard for me to hear. They weren't pleasant for me to hear. They brought to my attention some shortcoming in my life. It brought to my attention, Tommy, something in my life that 
doesn't please the Lord and, and doesn't serve the purpose that God means for me to have in my life. I've been in many a service and heard many a preacher preach things that challenged me and some that rebuked me. But I knew I was hearing the voice of the Lord. I didn't reject what I was hearing because I didn't like what I was hearing. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? No, 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 no. Why? Because I sat down and I dissected what this preacher was saying and I determined what he was saying was biblical? No, because if I had sat down and dissected what he was saying based on how I always looked at things and how I always understood things, then I probably would have explained away what he was saying. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? But see, I didn't explain away what he was saying and I'll tell you why. Because I heard the voice of the Lord. I'm one of the Lord's sheep. And His sheep know His voice. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Oh, when you hear preaching that is accurate and true, when you hear a message that is surely approved of God, it is anointed by the Holy Ghost. And that anointing gives that message what I like to refer to as voice recognition. That anointing allows you to be able to hear the voice of the Lord in the message that you're hearing. Many today have difficulty recognizing the word of the Lord when they hear it. They can hear a message preached which is absolutely accurate and biblical, but yet they fail to receive it as they do not hear the Lord's voice in it. The truth is, however, that one who cannot hear the voice of the Lord is one who is not numbered among the redeemed. Oh my goodness. The people right now hearing what I'm saying and rejecting it wholesale, I got news for you, my friend. I can tell you right now, without knowing you, without knowing anything about you, without knowing what church you go to or what pastor you listen to or what TV preacher you send money to, I can tell you that if you're rejecting what you're hearing right now, you're lost. You've got a religious spirit. You've convinced yourself you're born again when in truth you are not. How do I know? Because you cannot hear and identify and recognize the voice of the Lord. Oh my goodness, are you hearing me today? I want to tell you, there's nothing sweeter than hearing a voice and immediately being able to say, I know that voice. I remember years ago, I was living in New York City. I lived there for 10 years, roughly, the decade of the 90s. I was walking down Fifth Avenue. I had my camera outfit on me. I used to do a good amount of photography. Um, <clears throat> people would hire me sometimes to do uh, headshots and what have you in New York City. I would call myself a semi-professional, meaning I got paid for it, but at the same time, didn't necessarily mean I was so good at qualifying as a professional. But a lot of people would hire me, you know, to do headshots, and sometimes I'd meet people. This one young man from Mexico wanted me to, he models, and he wanted me to take some pictures of him uh, in Central Park. So I was meeting him in Central Park. And I'm walking up Fifth Avenue, and I'm, I'm almost to the point where... Uh, that big hotel on Central Park uh, South is right there, you know, to your left. And uh, I, all of a sudden I heard this laugh. And I stopped dead in my tracks. I just stopped dead. 
And I thought to myself, I know that voice. Immediately when I heard this laugh, I knew, I recognized it immediately. It stood out of all the laughter you could ever hear in New York City. This one woman's laugh just really stopped me dead in my tracks. And I turned around and I looked, and there she stood, the actress Kathy Najimy from Sister Act. Do you remember she was the heavy set, stocky nun? I loved her in that movie. She did such a wonderful job. And she just had, in the movie, she had this bubbly personality, you know, and she giggled and laughed, you know. And so when I heard that laugh, immediately it stopped me and I said, I know that voice. And I turned and there she was. And I was able to talk to her for a few minutes. And I asked her, as I happened to have my camera on me, I said, could I take a picture for my personal use? I said, I promise you, I'm not interested in selling this to no newspapers. I'm not interested in selling this. And I never did it. I said, I'm not interested in selling this to anybody. I said, this is just for me because I met you. And she said, oh, yeah. So she held up a little book. She was standing talking to a man who had a table set up of uh, New York uh, uh, paraphernalia, you know, for uh, tourist stuff, you know. And there was little books that I love New York on it, you know. And she held it up and smiled and I took her picture. But see, I didn't even have to see her face to recognize her. I, I didn't even have to see her to know she was near me. The minute I heard her voice, I immediately knew. I'm going to tell you something. God's people know the minute they hear the Lord's voice, it doesn't matter if He's speaking through a donkey or if He's speaking through the darkness of night as you lay on your bed. God's people know His voice. I've said many times, people say, you know, you talk about the Lord said this and the Lord said that to you. How do you know that the Lord is speaking to you? How do you know that isn't just your own thought process? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, you learn, you grow in your relationship with God and eventually you come to the place where you are so easily able to identify the voice of the Lord as the voice of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, one of the ways that I know it was God and not me is because half the time what He is saying to me is not Thing I'd be interested in saying to myself. A lot of times the voice of the Lord has come to me and He has chided me or He's corrected me or He's rebuked me or He set me straight on something. And believe me, I wasn't even wanting to, I had no thought in the universe of setting myself straight. Because I thought I was okay. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden I heard this voice say thus and so. And boy howdy, I stopped in my tracks. Why? Because I knew I was hearing from the Lord. Oh, I want to tell you, the anointing allows us to hear the voice of God. But our walk with God, our relationship with the Lord is such that we grow and we mature in Him to the place where we're able to identify and recognize when He is speaking to us directly. Whether the message we hear blesses us or stings us, a true believer hears and knows the voice of the Lord. Whether the message blesses or stings, we are able to identify it as the Lord speaking to us something we desperately need to hear. Many professed Christians today are following after false leaders and false teachers and false prophets. They're being led down a path that leads to destruction. And yet, they do not recognize the path they're on as being destructive because, listen to me, they don't recognize the voice of the Lord when they hear it. The Lord said, another 
Listen to me. In our primary text, he said another they will run from. Hallelujah. Oh my Lord, they'll run from that voice because it's not a familiar voice. It's not the voice of the Lord. And unless I'm hearing from God, I'm surely not going to listen to this guy. I remember, oh my Lord, I don't know how many years ago it's been now. My grandmother asked me one time, there was a new preacher on television by the name of Kenneth Copeland. Yeah, I said it. And my grandmother said to me, what do you think of this fella, this new preacher on TV called Kenneth Copeland? She said, what do you, what do you get from him? And I looked at her, I was probably a teenager, 13, 14 years old maybe at the time. And I looked at her and I said, that man has a devil. He is going to lead God's people so far astray. He is going to lead the church. People that follow him are going to go off in, in such a bad direction. They are going to be led in such a wrong direction. It's not even funny. I said, that man has a demon. Every time I hear his voice, I can feel that demonic presence. And yet, look how many millions of so-called Christians in America follow after this man the way that they do, right? Why? Because they wouldn't know the voice of the Lord if it came down like lightning and struck them on the head. And his message has grown more and more and more carnal over the years. It has grown more and more hateful over the years. It has grown more and more malicious over the years. He has gotten up and he has encouraged and promoted violence. And yet again, there are people who still merrily follow after him and believe everything he pre... Oh, he represents the Lord. Oh, no, he doesn't. Because, honey, I got news for you. I know the voice of the Lord when I hear it. And I have not once in all the years that man's been preaching, not once, not once did I ever sense the voice of the Lord coming out of that man's mouth. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Oh, I want to tell you, you better be in a place. You say, Pastor, why are you preaching this today? I'll tell you why I'm preaching it. Because every believer ought to pray and beg and ask the Lord, please, Lord, help me to identify your voice. Help me to understand when you're speaking, whether it be through a preacher or whether it be in the still, quiet hours of dark night. Help me, Lord, to identify your voice. Because I want to be your sheep. I want to be led by you. I want to follow after you. But if I'm going to do that, then I need to know your voice. Praise the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8, the word of the Lord tells us, And they, Adam and Eve, heard the, vo the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and Eve, his wife, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. They knew that voice. Hello now. They understood. They were in a relationship with God when the Lord spoke. They knew it was God speaking from the earliest days when man walked in relationship with God. Listen to me. They knew His voice. If we're going to walk in relationship with the Lord today, He wants us to be able to understand His voice. Salvation today comes in response to our ability to hear and recognize the voice of the Lord. You say, really? You mean I'm a child of God today because somehow I heard and recognized His voice? Yes. 
In Revelation 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, listen, hear my voice <laughs> and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Hallelujah. You're a believer today because one day God spoke. And for that brief moment in time, you were able to recognize, I believe I'm hearing the Lord knocking and calling. I believe I hear the Lord speaking my name. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to tell you, now it's a matter of growing accustomed to hearing from Him. Walking in fellowship with Him so that you recognize His voice every time He speaks. From the beginning, those who have walked in communion with the Lord have been able to hear and recognize His voice. Some time back, I preached a message, Can you see God's lips moving? It's been quite a number of years, I think, since I preached that message. But the message dealt with the idea that often when we hear various people speaking, we are in fact hearing the voice of the Lord. That it's actually God who's doing the speaking. There are times when we're going through things and we're experiencing things and the Lord will put somebody in our path and they will say something and it's like that sentence or that paragraph, that just those few words, it's as if God silenced them and He spoke through them. Am I telling the truth? You ever had that experience? You ever had that experience where you ran into somebody and you're talking to them and then all of a sudden you come home and you say, you know what, I, I think I heard from the Lord. I think I heard from the Lord. Why? Well, I, were you talking to him? No, I was talking to this person or that person, but I heard his voice. Hello now. Tommy and I were at a Walmart the other day. It's been a week or so ago, a week or two ago now. Ran into a friend of his from childhood. A young man who also grew up in the Jehovah's Witness organization. And that poor kid, I'm telling you, he's going through such a battle spiritually and psychologically. And he, he's going through it. He's having a hard time. And we were talking. And as we were talking, I said something to him about... He said something about never really being able to wrap his mind around why God even created man to begin with. You know, why was humanity even uh, from the get-go? Why was humanity even created? And I began to explain to him, and I said, listen, I said, it's easy when you understand. It, it, you know, I hate to use the concept of the, the, the bride of Frankenstein, but I'm going to use that for a minute. You know, God wanted to create for himself a bride. But he did not want to create simply a bride of Frankenstein. He didn't want to just give life to this being, as it were, and call that his bride. I said, no, he wanted a bride that consisted of uh, every cell of her body, as it were, loved him. And every cell of, him, of her body was committed to him. I said, so what he did was, he created the cells, each individual cell. And each individual cell could choose whether or not it wanted to love God. And whether or not it wanted to walk in relationship with God. And when this thing is all done, he's going to take every cell that had, has made that choice to love Him. Isn't that why the Word of God says, love the Lord your God with all your might and with all your strength and with all your mind, right? Because that's what He wants is for this bride to love Him. And He's going to take all of these people, each of them a cell as it were, and He's going to put them together and they will constitute the bride of Christ. And He'll have a bride. But not a bride that he merely created, but a bride who is his bride by choice.
And not a bride who loves him in part, but a bride who loves him in whole and is committed to him in whole because every cell of that bride has made that choice. Now, we, I said a number of other things, Tommy and I, we said a number of other things to him during the course of the conversation. But after I said that, he said, that makes more sense to me than anything I've ever heard in my life. And he just, his eyes lit up and he was so happy. He said, you have no idea. You have no idea how much that, that just clicks and how much sense that makes to me. Wow! You see, I may have said a thousand things to him, but that one thing was God speaking to him. Hallelujah. That one thing was the voice of the Lord. He may not yet recognize that was the voice of the Lord. But one day, by the help and grace of God, he will. And he'll be able to look back and say, I remember when the Lord spoke to me through that preacher. Hallelujah. And that began my journey home. Glory to God. Oh, I want to tell you. My sheep, the Lord said, know my voice. He said, but a stranger they will not follow, but will flee from him. For they know not the voice of strangers. While it may be a man or a woman who speaks to us at times, it is in fact the Lord God Himself who is communicating with us through them. The Lord knew that opinion and variations in understanding would prevent believers from always being able to hear and receive the truths of His Word. With this in mind, he spoke of the need and the ability of God's people to hear and recognize his voice. Rather than simply relying upon their being able to accurately discern and recognize the truthfulness and the accuracy of the message. See, the Lord knew. People are going to have prejudices. They're going to have ideas. They're going to find ways to interpret things for themselves that suits themselves. So therefore, they need more than the ability to properly interpret and understand the Word of God. They need some way to be able, listen to me, to hear my voice. Because if they can hear my voice... I can direct them and I can guide them in the way of truth. He instead of merely talking about discerning and recognizing the truthfulness of a message, he instead articulated upon the ability of God's people to recognize His voice. Even the people of Israel had this same exact walk with God. In Deuteronomy 4 and 12, And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. This is Moses speaking to the people of Israel. He said, the Lord has spoken to you. You've heard the voice of the Lord. You've heard the voice of God speak out of, a, out of the midst of the fire. In Deuteronomy 5.24, And ye said, Behold, the Lord our God hath showed us His glory and His greatness, and we have heard His voice out of the midst of the fire. We have seen this day that God doth talk with man and he liveth. Hallelujah. People say, how do you know God's real? I tell you how I know it's real. He walks with me and he talks with me. Hallelujah. That's how I know God's real. He talks to me. I know his voice when I hear it. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 20, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God 
and that thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord sware unto thy fathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. In 1 Samuel 12, 15, But if ye will not obey the voice of the Lord, but rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall the hand of the Lord be against you, as it was against your fathers. Notice Samuel didn't say, if you rebel against the word of the Lord. No, it's not what he said. <laughs> he said, if you rebel against the voice of the Lord. See, God's people, God's sheep are able to do a whole lot more than read words on a printed page. No, they're able to hear and recognize His voice. Hallelujah. See, folks, that's what the Holy Ghost was given to the church for. The Word of God said, Jesus said, that the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of truth. He said He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Isn't that what He said? See, the Spirit of the Lord is the invisible presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when the Holy Ghost speaks, we're hearing what? The voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to tell you. Jesus said He will not speak of Himself, but He will speak of me. And that is a King James translation. And I, I, I wish people could understand that trying to translate uh, uh, the Hebrew and the Greek into English, as one rabbi said, you know, uh, he said any translation is a bad translation, especially when you start with Hebrew. But people need to understand what the Lord was saying, in fact, was he will not speak for himself or as himself, but he will speak for or as me. That's what the Lord was saying. He was saying the Holy Ghost isn't going to speak as a, a separate individual because it isn't a separate individual. When you hear the Holy Ghost speaking, it's me you're hearing speak. I know that voice. When I hear the Lord speak, whether it be through a preacher, whether it be through an evangelist, whether it be in the darkness of the night, whether it be through another individual with whom I'm speaking, when the Lord speaks to me, I hear and I know and I recognize His voice because His sheep know His voice. In 1 John 4 and 1, John the Apostle, the same man who wrote the gospel that our primary text comes from today, this same John wrote, Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So what's he saying? Is he saying dissect their message? Determine whether or not they're a true prophet by reason of the accuracy of their message? No. John didn't say anything about dissecting their message. What he did talk about was discerning their spirit. Oh my goodness, did you hear what I said? It's not about their message. It's about the spirit by which they deliver that message. What I felt when I heard that TV preacher years ago had nothing to do with the word that come out of his mouth. It had to do with the spirit that I felt as he was speaking. Do you follow what I'm telling you now? John said, you can't just believe everybody because they claim to be preaching the Word of God. You can't trust their message simply because they claim to be preaching the Word of God. In 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul warned his young son in the faith, Timothy, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears 
from the truth. Not their eyes. Doesn't have anything to do with what they're reading. Has to do with what? What they're hearing. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know why? Because they cannot recognize the voice of the Lord when they hear it. And they cannot recognize that the voice they're hearing is that of a stranger and not of the Lord. You know why? Because they're lost. Because they're not who they claim to be. They don't have what they claim to have. Because God's sheep know His voice. Notice how we are not told to weigh or to try the message, but rather the spirit by which the message is delivered. This is a direct reference to the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Using this method, we are instructed to receive the message, listen, so long as it is delivered by reason of the Holy Ghost anointing. Honey, when I sit under a preacher and I know, I, I know that I know that the anointing of the Holy Ghost was present, then I know that I have heard the voice of the Lord. Do you hear what I'm telling you now? Amen. I had a preacher in, I think it was West Virginia, years ago now. We had just started our work in Dallas. I don't think we were two years into our church here in Dallas. One day I got a phone call. The man on the other end of the phone said, Is this Pastor Charles? And I said, Yes, sir. He said, Hi, my name is so-and-so, and I pastor a United Pentecostal Church in... I think it was in West Virginia or Virginia or something. And he said, and the minute he said that, I just tightened up because all I could anticipate was that he was going to say something foolish, you know. Something negative, something judgmental, something critical, something condemnatory. And I kind of cringed up a little bit like, oh Lord, here we go again. He said, my wife and I have been listening to your preaching on the internet Back then, all we had was the audio. We didn't have video yet. He said, I just wanted to call and tell you, we support you 100%. I almost fell off my chair. Couldn't believe what I was hearing. He said, we support you 100%. He said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, son, my wife's looked at me and said to me, there's no way in the world that man's lying because the anointing of the Holy Ghost that is on him helps me to identify that I'm hearing the voice of the Lord. Oh, there's a lot of people in that very denomination who will pick apart and they'll try to do everything in their power to destroy me and to destroy the message that we preach. But you know what, sweetie? Those who recognize His voice are able to hear and understand that even though the message that comes off this pulpit may challenge them at times, even though the message that comes off this pulpit is somewhat different than what they're accustomed to hearing, the fact of the business is just like the Lord set Peter straight on the rooftop, they're hearing the voice of the Lord. He's setting some things straight. He's making some things right. Hallelujah, I'm almost done today. Many go to church Sunday after Sunday and the message they hear is motivated and carried by spirits of greed, selfishness, anger, judgment, criticism, worldliness, carnality, or even a good old-fashioned lying spirit. Yet they follow after that message because they are not genuinely one of the Lord's sheep. Were they one who knew the security and the comfort of the master's fold, they would know that the voice by which that message was delivered was not the voice of the Lord. 
The Lord Jesus Christ was not the least bit ambiguous in his messaging in our primary text today. He stated clearly, my sheep know my voice. Those who do not recognize his voice, therefore, are not his sheep. It's that simple. In Hebrews 3, 14 through 19, For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today, if ye will hear His voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day of provocation. For some when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest? but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So what was Paul saying? He was speaking of the children of Israel in the wilderness. He said, many started out with the Lord. They heard His voice in the wilderness when He spoke to them from the midst of the fire. They heard His voice, but they later fell into unbelief. Although they had heard His voice, they still... Fell. Got news for you, there are a lot of people, you may have heard His voice to the point that you believed the Gospel in the beginning. You may have heard His voice to the point that you had an experience with God uh, at the beginning. But as time has progressed, honey, you have fallen out of an understanding and a recognition of His voice and you slowly have declined into a state of unbelief. And you will not enter into His rest. In John chapter 5, again the Apostle John, the same author who wrote our primary text, John chapter 5, verses 25 through 29, our final text today. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is. When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because He is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves, listen, shall hear His voice, and shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Oh children, I want to tell you in closing today, one day the voice of the Lord will call His people from their graves. Hallelujah. Only those who know His voice will respond to that call. And on that day, Oh, I want to tell you, you're gladly going to proclaim, I know that voice. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know that voice. I can just see millions rising from their grave on resurrection morning, each one with their hand in the air saying, I know that voice. Hallelujah. Glory.